Welcome to our reading lesson for today. We have two main jobs that we are going to focus on today. One, hopefully you've already done by looking at our strategies video. If you haven't, you can do that after this lesson. Our first job is to use a variety of strategies, that means more than just one, to decode unknown words, and you can listen to me as I explain those. I'll also give some examples today as we're reading. But that strategies video is a really good one for you and your family to see so that you can use the same strategies at home if you find them helpful. Also today, we're going to work on identifying cause and effect in a fantasy story. So cause and effect is going to be our big focus for right now. And that fantasy story that we get to enjoy is if you give a pig a pancake. What makes this story fantasy is that it couldn't happen in real life. It's so much fun. I really enjoy these stories by Laura Numeroff and Felicia Bond. But they couldn't happen in real life. They have things like talking animals or animals that act like people. That's what makes them fantasy. But we are going to focus right now on cause and effect. Even before we read the book, I want you to think about cause and effect. If you looked outside the window and it was raining, what might you do before you went outside? Think to yourself. Is there anything you might bring with you? Some of you might be thinking, oh, I should get my rain jacket. Or, oh, I need an umbrella. That's cause and effect. You saw rain, so you thought, I need a jacket or umbrella. That rain caused you to do something. Getting your coat or your umbrella is the effect. You wouldn't have done that if you looked outside and it was sunny. Or you would have done something totally different if it was snowy. Seeing rain is what made those other things happen. Same, here's another example. If I were to say something nice to you, you are a very hard worker, or you are very kind, what might you do? Are you going to go like this? No, that doesn't make sense. Would me saying something kind to you make you do that? Show me what you think it would really make you do. I hope a lot of you are smiling. When you hear something nice, it causes you to smile. It makes you feel good about yourself. That's the cause and effect. The nice thing, the compliment, made you feel good about yourself and made you want to smile. That's cause and effect. So we're going to talk about that some more today as we're reading. This is if you give a pig a pancake. Here on this big word is maybe a place I would have used a strategy. I could break that one up. I recognize that chunk. That's actually a whole word I know. Pan, cake, pancake. This book is filled with cause and effects. We won't write about every single one of them, but we will use some today and we'll make another one of our thinking maps. This time it's called a multi-flow map. If you give a pig a pancake, she'll want some syrup to go with it. You'll give her some of your favorite maple syrup. She'll probably get all... Oh, here's another place I could use a strategy. I recognize that ick pattern. And the st. St. Ick. St. Ick. Oh, and that Y makes an E or an I sound at the end of words. St. Ick. I. Stick I. That's not a word I know. Sticky. Stick. Sticky. Sticky. Oh, would, would syrup make her sticky? That makes sense. Do you notice how I didn't get the word right away when I used my strategy? That's okay. Sometimes it might take a few tries. She'll probably get all sticky. So she'll want to take a bath. So here we've already seen a few different things happen that are cause and effect. Wanted a pancake. That made her want syrup. The syrup made her sticky. Now the syrup is being sticky is making her want a bath. So let's take a little pause here and look at our multi-flow map. When we look at our multi-flow map, we look at a big event. So right now we're going to say the pig wants a bath. And I want you to think about what happened earlier in the story. The 
kid wants a bath, what happened that made her want that bath? Think about what happened earlier that caused that. Ooh, right before here, she got sticky. She got, ooh, just like we use that strategy to sound out the word, to read it, we can use it for writing it too. St, st, st. I, 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 I. Here's where I have to remember that CK team. St, I, E. She got sticky. That's something that caused her to want a bath. So now let's see what happens as a result of her wanting a bath. She asks you for some bubbles. Think to yourself, would that have happened if she didn't want a bath? Would she have had a reason to ask for bubbles? No, so that makes it an effect. She asks for bubbles. She only did that because she wanted a bath. You might be noticing that I'm seeing the words because and so a lot. They're used a lot when we're talking about cause and effect. Something happens so it makes something else happen or something happened because of something that happened earlier. Pig wants a bath, so she'll ask you for some bubbles. When you give her the bubbles, she'll probably ask you for a toy. You'll have to find her rubber, your rubber duck. Now, usually when we have a bath, that's when we want a rubber duck, so that's another effect. The pig wants a bath, so she needs a rubber duck. Rub, er, that's an E R ending. Duck. Ooh, another time at the end of our word, we hear that k sound. A lot of times it's our C K. K. She needs a rubber duck. That happened because she wanted a bath. If we're reading our chart, we can kind of think of it as if we're reading it backwards. We read it as because. We read it frontwards, it's so. She got sticky, so she wants a bath. She asks for bubbles because she wants to, to be able to take a bath. She needs a rubber duck because she wants to take a bath. She doesn't want to do it without those things. The duck will remind her of the farm where she was born. She might feel homesick and want to visit her family. Seeing that rubber duck caused her to remember her home on the farm and feel a little bit sad. She'll want you to come too. She'll look through your closet for a suitcase. Then she'll look under your bed. When she's under the bed, she'll find your old tap shoes. She'll try them on. She'll probably need something to wear with them. Everything she does is causing something else to happen. Causing her to think of something else or want something else. When she's all dressed, she'll ask for some music. You'll play your very best piano piece and she'll start dancing. Then she'll want to take her, then she'll want you to take her picture. Do you hear how I made a mistake there? We'll talk about that a lot this year. Everybody makes mistakes sometimes. We try to pay close attention to our reading so we don't make lots, but it's okay if we make mistakes once in a while, especially if we go back and fix them. Then she'll want you to take her picture. So you'll have to get your camera. When she sees the picture, she'll ask you to take more. Then she'll want to send one to each of her friends. You'll have to give her some envelopes and stamps and take her to the mailbox. On the way, she'll see the tree in your backyard. She'll want to build a tree house. Now this is kind of over the top silly. Most of the time, 
looking at stamps and envelopes probably wouldn't lead to making a tree house, but in this one it does. So you'll have to get her some wood, a hammer, and some nails when the tree house is finished. She'll want to decorate it. She'll ask for wallpaper and glue. When she hangs the wallpaper, she'll get all sticky. Huh, we're back to her being sticky again. That's happened twice in her story. Feeling sticky will remind her of her favorite of your favorite maple syrup. Remember how before she had maple syrup and it caused her to get sticky? Now getting sticky is causing her to remember that. She'll probably ask you for some. And chances are, if she asks you for some syrup, you'll stop and think to yourself, her getting syrup, what might it cause her to ask for? What else might she think of when she thinks of syrup? It might cause her to think of something that usually goes with syrup. Hope you're thinking, what might that be? She'll want a pancake to go with it. Or some of you might, been think might have been thinking of things like waffles. Those also have syrup. We just in this time got to see her have pancakes twice. So we got to think about some cause and effect today. Something happening that causes something else to happen. As you're going through your day, maybe you can notice some cause and effect around your house. Maybe you're thinking, oh, you say to your family, I'm getting hungry. What does that cause them to do? Does it cause them to decide to go make lunch? Start noticing that cause and effect happening in your life. It happens all around you every day. You fall and hurt yourself. I hope that doesn't happen today. But you fall and that causes you to have a skinned knee. The effect is the skinned knee. The cause was the fall. So be thinking about that cause and effect. This is our first introduction to this this year, but we will come back and talk about it more throughout the year. Taking a look at our job. Think to yourself, did you practice using some strategies? I used a few as we were reading, but I really want you to make sure you've watched that video showing all of the strategies. If you haven't, you can do that as soon as you're done watching this one. Also think to yourself, did we talk about some cause and effect in our story? Did we talk about how the pig wants a bath because she got sticky? Or we could say it the other way. She got sticky, so she wants a bath. That's our cause and effect. So you can give yourself a thumbs up for that. We did that job together. And you can keep looking out for cause and effect around your house today. Have a wonderful rest of your day.